Let's talk about how to use UTM codes to make data-informed decisions for your business and how to use that data in a way that's going to help you maximize your time and energy when moving your TPT business forward. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and start off by telling you that if you're looking for a strategy that involves um, pulling out Google Sheets or pulling out an Excel spreadsheet, this is not it. Sometimes I wish I were that girl, but I am absolutely not. The strategies that we're gonna be looking at today, they're very simple. It doesn't involve pulling out your Excel spreadsheets. It doesn't involve any of that. We're simply taking a look at the data and assessing what that data tells us. Now let's start off with what are UTM codes and how do you use them in case that's you and you're listening right now and you're like, wait, what? A UTM code, simply put, is a tool that allows you to create custom links that track how many people click on that link, how many people purchase a resource through that link, and what your conversion rates are for that link. So let's talk about how you create that. So I'm gonna show you on my screen right here, this is how you create a UTM code. So what you're going to do is you're gonna start by going to your TPT store, and you are going to copy a link to a product or to a category of resources within your store. Once you've copied that link, you're gonna to go to your TPT dashboard and you're gonna click on the traffic tab. You scroll down to the bottom and click URL builder. You're then gonna copy and paste that URL at the top and then list the source and the campaign. Now the source is just where you are sending people from. So if you're sending them from Pinterest or if you're sending them from email or social media, you're just gonna list where that source is from and then you're going to type the name of the campaign. So the way I like to do this, for example, would be to say email and then the campaign might be the subject line of my email and then the product that it's directly linking to. So if I'm linking to multiple products within my email, then I might say, put the subject line of my email or an abbreviated form of that subject line, or even the date if you would prefer. Um, and then I like to put um, that specific resource that I linked to, just in case I come back later on and I can't remember exactly what all I linked to inside of that email, I have that to kind of refer back to. Okay, now creating the UTM codes, it does take a little bit more time than simply linking to a product, but I'm gonna tell you it is 100% worth it because utilizing UTM codes is how I decided that I was not gonna spend a significant portion of my time marketing on Instagram or marketing on social media. And let's talk about why and how you can use these UTM codes to help you make database decisions for your business and decide where you are going to concentrate your efforts, okay? So using UTM codes is especially helpful when you're doing any kind of marketing because really and truly that's what it's for. It's to help you decide whether or not your marketing or your ad revenue or whatever it is that you're doing to market your resource and drive traffic to your store. It's designed to help you decide whether or not it is worth your time, effort, and energy or worth your money, okay? And it's designed to give you some feedback on whether or not what you're doing is working. So let's talk about some basic ways that you can use this on a regular basis. And then we're gonna talk about how to make full on business decisions about where you're gonna concentrate your time, effort, and energy inside of your business. So one of the simplest ways that I use this on a regular basis is when I am testing out my email marketing, right? So let's say I have a new product line. Okay, I'm really excited about this product line and I wanna spend some time specifically only marketing this line of resources to my email list, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send an, a series of three to four emails out over the course of a month. So these could be my weekly newsletters or what have you, but I'm just gonna send three to four emails out that are all based around that product line. So one might be a direct advertisement. It might just be a direct sale. It might be like, here are these resources, you're going to love them, go buy them right now, right? The next one might be more of an informational email where I focus on specifically talking about um, research-based strategies and how my product line implements those research-based strategies. And so my email might be kind of more of a roundabout sales pitch where I'm kind of sneaking my product in, but I'm focusing on educating my buyer and educating my market, right? And then I'm kind of sneaking in and going, oh, by the way, if you wanna do this in a simple, easy way, Here's my product, okay? 
Email number three may be kind of a mixture of both. It might be a list of strategies and ways that you can implement my product inside of your classroom. These are standalone strategies that a teacher can use with or without my resource. And so it's helpful information to them, but obviously my resource is gonna make this really easy to implement those strategies, okay? So we kind of have a strong sales pitch. We have a very small sales pitch with that second one where it's mostly focused on information. And then the third one is kind of a mixture of both. It's strategies, but obviously it's strategies that are linked to my resource. And so when I am using these UTM codes, I am able to quickly at the end of the month assess which type of email most resonated with my audience and which one made them more inclined to purchase. And I'm able to look at several different pieces of data when it comes to this and UTM codes. So the first thing that I'm able to look at is how many people actually clicked through based on that email, okay? Now, click-throughs are not the end-all be-all, right? Just because somebody clicks doesn't mean they purchase. And so just because I get the most clicks with an email doesn't mean that that is going to be the way that I wanna go every time. Because the end goal is for a buyer to purchase a resource, right? And so if I'm wanting them to purchase a resource, then I want them to do more than click, I want them to click and buy, okay? And so it could be that that very first email that was a straight up sales pitch, right? Go check these out, go look at this. That could get me the most clicks, but it may not get me the most purchases, okay? And so I'm looking at all of these different pieces of information. Which email got me the most clicks? Because that's gonna be the most important kind of email if I'm wanting to do something like a free resource. If I'm wanting to send my buyers a free resource, which one got me the most clicks? because whichever one got me the most clicks is probably gonna get me the most free resource downloads. And so if I'm simply wanting to get a product into my buyer's hands, then I might wanna look at this email got me the most clicks, great. Does this mean I have to write it down? No, it does not, but you can. You can make a simple note. This email got me the most clicks. This is the type of email that I wanna do if I'm using a freebie, if I'm advertising a freebie. Just very direct, go get this free resource, right? But let's say that I'm not really interested in that. I'm interested in boosting the conversion rate on a product. I'm interested in selling them inside of the email so that when they go to my product, they're already sold. That I'm gonna get a very high conversion rate on that product. And so if I'm interested in that, then I'm gonna be looking at which email le leads to the highest conversions with a buyer, which email is being the most convincing out of all of them, it is convincing them to buy the most. And the reason that's so important is because when I'm looking at conversion rates, when I have a high conversion rate, that what that means is my message resonated with my buyer and it made them want to purchase. And oftentimes with these UTM codes, we have a higher conversion rate when they purchase multiple items, okay? And so if I'm looking at that, then I'm looking at what resonated the most with my buyer, and that kind of tells me about the messaging inside of my email and how successful that messaging was, okay? Now let's talk about sheer numbers because sometimes I'm going to send out an email that has a very low conversion rate, but it makes me a lot of money. Okay, and this might mean that I'm linking to a high ticket item because I've got to look at that overall too. So for example, I was taking a look at my data before I recorded this podcast and I noticed that there was an email that I sent out that had less than 1% conversion rate, but it made me $150. And the reason for that was I was advertising a high ticket item inside of this email. And so it was a link through to a high ticket product. And so even though I didn't sell very many of those high ticket products, having that less than 1% conversion rate was okay because it was still making me money, okay? And so that tells me that even though it was a low conversion rate, I still made a good profit on that email. And so it's okay that the conversion rate was a little bit lower. So using these UTM codes inside of my emails is going to allow me to figure out the next time I wanna send out a campaign, Based on what results I'm wanting, it's gonna help me determine which type of email I should send out, 
okay? Now, again, this isn't something that you necessarily have to write down. This is something that if you are watching on a regular basis and you just make note of it. So for example, I send out an email every single Tuesday on Wednesday after 12 p.m., that's when I know that data hits my dashboard. And I go and I take a look on Wednesday at around lunchtime, whenever Blair's taking her nap, I go, I sit down and I just take a look at conversion rates. How many click-throughs did I get? How many conversions? How much money did I make off of that? And then I just kind of tuck that information away and I use it for the next week. Or if I'm kind of stuck and I think to myself, okay, I wanna send out um, an email and I wanna specifically sell these particular resources and highlight these particular resources this month, then I can pull up my data for the last four weeks, five weeks, even six weeks, and I can look at each email that came through and I can see, okay, if I'm wanting to get the most click-throughs, which one of these emails got me the most click-throughs? And if I can't remember what that email was, no big deal because the subject line is saved inside of my UTM code. So then all I have to do is go to my email marketing platform and take a look at what was that email that I sent out with that subject line and take a look at that email and go, okay, I wanna create an email like this. After you do this for a while, it really becomes second nature and you start to really understand what types of emails you're going to have to send out in order to get the results that you want without even having to look at all of the data. Now, do we still look at the data? Yes, we do, but we don't have to track it in an Excel spreadsheet necessarily to get the results that we want, okay? Let's dig a little bit deeper here for a second, and let's talk about how to make data-informed decisions for your business, because I mentioned earlier that using UTM codes was how I decided and determined that I was not going to be focusing on social media marketing anymore. And the reason for that was, number one, I was not getting nearly as many click-throughs from Instagram to TPT as I was via email, okay? Now, this can also have to do with the size of your audience, but I found even when my Instagram audience and my email audience were roughly the same size, I'm still getting more click-throughs with my email. I'm getting higher conversion rates with my email and I'm making way more money with my email. And so what that tells me is, if I have a limited amount of time, which is me and probably everybody else who is watching or listening to this right now, right? If I have a limited amount of time to market my resources or to get ready for a sale, okay, um, then I wanna know where is my time going to be best placed. If I'm using UTM codes, then I am going to be able to know the answer for this. Okay. So for example, we just had a site-wide sale and we're gearing up at the time of this podcast, we're gearing up for another site-wide sale that usually happens around the 1st of May. And so this is a really great time to go back and look at that data. If you used UTM codes, this would be a really great time for you to decide between now and the next sale, where is your effort best going to be placed? If I'm advertising to my email list and I'm advertising on social media, I have to look at how much time does it take me to do both of those things. If it takes me an hour to create my Instagram graphics, my um, captions and creating all of my stories and getting on live and talking about those things and replying to comments and answering DMs and all of that good stuff, and I only make $25, is that worth my time? Not to me. It is absolutely not. Because I can take that same hour and I can schedule out some of my emails or I can focus on crafting my copy inside of my email to resonate with my ideal customer a little bit better and hopefully maximize my efforts there. Or I can take an hour working on a way to grow my email list, which is ultimately going to make me more money if my email list is bringing me higher conversion rates, more traffic, and more sales, right? If my email list is making me more money, then that's the area I wanna grow. Now this could be vice versa for some people. Some people may find that they have much more success marketing on Instagram than they do marketing on email. And so you have to decide what's going to work best for you. And here's another UTM code that you wanna consider that you don't even have to create yourself. This is a UTM code that TPT makes for you, and that is the TPT email UTM code. 
So whenever you create a new product, TBT sends out an email to all of your followers and it lets them know that you created a new resource inside of your store and it sends them that resource. Now, some people may find in the beginning, especially that they're getting a better um, return on their investment by creating new products and those products being sent by TPT to all of their followers. And so you wanna look at that piece of information as well and decide, is it worth at this stage in my business, is it worth me spending most of my time building my email list, growing my social media account, or should I be focusing on creating new resources? Because that's another key piece. So look at what is making you the most money. Look at what's bringing you the greatest return on your investment and then decide where you're going to concentrate your time, energy, and efforts. And a really great way to test that is going to be with this upcoming sale. So we have a sale coming up in May. A sideways sale is a really great place to test all of this because there is more traffic going to TPT and buyers are more likely to buy when resources are on sale. And so you can test it. Throw everything at the wall and see what sticks. Market on social media, hardcore. Market to your email list, hardcore. Create new products so that TPT is sending out an email to your followers and then step back and take a look at that data. And let that data tell you where you should focus your time, effort, and energy, not only for your business as a whole, but even just for the next, next side weight sale. This helps to prevent overwhelm and burnout by making you feel like you have to do everything. A lot of times what happens is people look at their success as like this one big picture. I did well during this sale or I did well this month because I did all of these things. When the reality is if they took the time to just do one of those things and to do it really well and to focus on growing that one area, they probably would have done much better than if they had done all of the things and they would have felt less overwhelmed. If you wanna learn more about how to focus your time, energy, and efforts, then you wanna join Rebranded Teacher Academy. Every single month, we have a challenge that focuses on a specific way that you can strategically grow your business. These are done for you monthly goals and strategies, and we team up every single month to work on these together. There's also an entire course and content library where you can get access to my course, Selling 101, which is for brand new TPT sellers, as well as strategic growth, which helps you strategically grow your TPT store without all the stress, without all the overwhelm. If you wanna learn more about how to join Rebranded Teacher Academy, you'll find a link for that down in the description. Thanks so much, you guys, for showing up today. I will see you in the next video.